Hey, hey, it is Zenial Gamer, and even though the intro sounds exciting, the news today is not exciting, guys. com to us has re-enabled HTTPS to contact, or excuse me, to connect to the game, uh, which has major implications for those of you who use the optimizer. Now, uh, this happened once about a year ago. It lasted for like, I don't know, three to six months, and then it turned off. So at that time, there were solutions found. That's the good news. You can see the Discord post behind me right now from Xandro linking us over to a thread that was created about a year ago that has instructions on how you can still get your JSON file and use the optimizer. So uh, for today's video guys, uh, you can see we're just going to be sharing along. We're not actually going to be in the game. We're going to be sharing along as I work to uh, reset everything up because it's been a long time since I have actually done this. So I'm going to be following the steps in the post. now. The one thing that I do want to tell you is there are instructions down here for blue stacks. Unfortunately, uh, I think these instructions need to be updated. Uh, I tried for over an hour last night and I could not get it to work. If you scroll down, you'll see there's a note that the original instructions for blue stacks involved installing a certificate out of Google Drive. And it said if you didn't install it out of Google Drive, you would wind up in an infinite loop where BlueStacks kept asking you for your PIN number or a password. Uh, and then every time you programmed it in, it would just bring you back and ask you for it again. That's what happened to me even when I did install it out of Google Drive. So uh, I'm pretty sure I did everything according to these instructions, uh, but it's been a year, which means BlueStacks has had updates. So we may need some new instructions on that. So for today, what we're gonna be doing is following the instructions for Knox, but I do want to point out that this thread, which I'll also put a link in the video description, this thread does have instructions for rooted Android 7 devices if you want to do this from your cell phone or from your tablet, and um, also for iOS. Now, one last note before we continue, because I get this question all the time, guys. Uh, people ask, are you allowed to play on an emulator? So, I cannot speak on behalf of calm to us I've never spoken to calm to us uh, all I can tell you is that to the best of my knowledge, there is an official statement from Calm to us that says that uh, using an emulator is not supposed to happen. Uh, they don't support them. But if you choose to use an emulator, you need to make sure you're using one that does not have any built-in cheat or hacking programs because if they catch you, even using an emulator that can cheat or hack, then your account can get restricted. So my suggestion to you guys, if you are not comfortable using an emulator, is to set up the um, set all of this up, like right here, what we're gonna do in this video. Log into the emulator, get your JSON file, which happens instantly when you log in, and then log back out and go back to playing on your phone or your tablet. Got one last question. People always ask me, can you get in trouble for using the optimizer? Now, to the best of my knowledge, there are probably tens of thousands of players who use the optimizer. I've never heard of anyone getting in trouble for it. And I do want to point you out to the bottom of this post right here. Again, the post is linked in the description where you can see that Xandro actually spoke to Calm to us about the optimizer, sent them analytics, and those analytics were sent to Calm to us headquarters, but there's never been uh, anything saying that we cannot use the optimizer. All right, with that said, let's go ahead and start the installation process. Now, obviously, I'm just gonna edit out the parts where I'm waiting for things like downloads and whatever, but I will show you guys uh, the steps that I am taking to do the installation. All right, first up, we are going to install the Knox emulator. Now, I wanna point out right here, you can see my search up here was for Big Knox. This is kind of important, guys. If you actually search for Knox, uh, there are some really, um, uh, you know, I was going to be diplomatic, but why do I need to be? There's some malicious sites out there. I don't know why, uh, but for whatever reason, you've got to be really careful. If you install the wrong Nox player, you can wind up getting a virus or malware on your computer. So make sure that you're coming from BigNox.com. Uh, BigNox is the official uh, player. So we're going to go to Nox and then we're just going to click on download. Okay, so we've got Nox on our desktop now. We're just going to double click. Uh, we go ahead and click I've read and accept, and then we go ahead and click install. Okay, so now that Knox is installed, this is maybe the most important part of the process, guys. Please make sure you catch this part. If you skip this step, you're gonna be wasting a lot of work from this point forward. I'm speaking from experience, it happened to me. <laughs> That's why I know. All right, guys, so you can see over here, and once again, I'll put a link in the description. We've got uh, some instructions on screen for how to change the version of your Android in the Knox. 
So we're gonna come over here to um, to this little, it's like uh, three windows kind of stacked behind each other on the side, they're right above the scissors. We click on this and it brings us into the multi instance manager. Now from here, we are going to come down here to add emulator. We're gonna click on the, uh, the menu button, the little three dots, and we are gonna choose official Android version five. Now the reason that we have to do this is because you can't do the, um, the, the rest of the steps. You can actually do them, but they won't work uh, as far as putting the security certificate in and getting Knox to read the security certificate if it's on Android version seven or later. And you can see by default, it starts on Android seven. So if we don't put in this older version of Knox, then the steps you take after this, they're gonna look like they work, but they don't. Uh, so once this emulator is installed, we're gonna go ahead and actually launch it. We can just hit the play button. Uh, but the other thing I wanna make sure you guys note is that on your desktop, you should have a Knox multi-drive icon. So you're actually gonna have two Knox icons. One is for Knox, the other is for multi-drive. So going forward, when you start your Knox, you wanna make sure that you use the multi-drive one. And if you double click this, you can actually come in here. It brings us right back to where we were. You click the little edit button right here and you can change this to um, Android 5 and then you might actually wanna just change this to Android 7 so you know the difference between them. Uh, and then in the multi-instance manager, we're gonna go ahead and just hit the play button right here to launch our Android version 5. Okay, so Knox is installed. Now guys, we've got a choice. Um, if you are in the US or a country that supports Amazon coins, I would actually highly suggest that you install the Amazon App Store first because you can also make your Amazon coins purchases through Knox. Uh, if, uh, of course, if you have like, if you play on like an Amazon Fire tablet or something like that, you don't need to take this step. So your choice is we can install the Amazon App Store so that you can use Amazon coins on your emulator or we can install Summoner's War through Google Play. I do recommend only installing Summoner's War through one app store or the other just because from my personal experience, I get confused between the icons on the desktop. I never know which, which icon came from which game. So I'm gonna be doing the Amazon coin steps, but just keep in mind, uh, you, if you're not using Amazon coins or if you're in a country that doesn't support them, uh, then you can skip the Amazon App Store installation part of this video and just install Summoner's War from Google Play. All the steps from that point beyond are going to be the same. So installing the Amazon App Store is super simple. All we're gonna do is actually Google Amazon App Store. I'm also gonna put a direct link in the video description if I remember, hopefully. Um, but you can see right here, the one for me that's actually highlighted says get Amazon App Store. So we're gonna click on this. It's really simple. Now it's a, it's a lot harder to do this on your phones because you have to change some security devices. But right here we see get Amazon App Store. We are going to copy this link. Now, uh, that's because I'm in my optimized, or excuse me, I'm in my browser right now. So we're gonna copy the link and then we're gonna put that link into the browser in Knox. I could have actually just done the search in Knox. I don't know why I did it this way, but we're gonna leave it that way. Okay, so now obviously this is gonna be off screen. I am logging into my, um, my Google account right now on Knox. Now, we are going to go into the built-in browser in Knox, and we're gonna go ahead into the um, search bar right here. We're gonna paste in the Amazon App Store link that we already found. We're gonna click Get Amazon App Store, and uh, then we're gonna just scroll down. Actually, it starts the download by default. These are the steps right here. Uh, the steps that's showing on the screen are what you would do on your phone. We should not need to do that on the emulator, uh, this should all be turned off by default. So we're actually just gonna scroll down our notifications bar, click on the Amazon APK, and then click install. We've got the Amazon App Store installed now. We go ahead and click done. Now, once again, you're gonna have to do another sign in. So I am taking it off screen um, as I put in my personal account info. And then we're gonna come down here to my apps and it should already be uh, in your apps if you've used the App Store in the past. If you have not, then you can just go up to the search bar and search for Summoner's War, either way works. We're gonna go ahead and click install. Of course, you're just gonna hit okay for the um, access and stuff. Now, make sure you choose your server, but here's a really important thing after you choose your server be sure that you click this hive button in the top right corner here so that you're logged in before you click tap to start all right so here we go we have a total of 1.6 gigs to download we're gonna go ahead and just hit yes and we're gonna take a nap okay so now that we have the game installed we're actually gonna go ahead we're gonna log right back out 
and then we are going to set up our proxy so that we can get the JSON. Okay, now that we have Nox and the game and Android coins, or excuse me, Android coins, Amazon coins installed if you chose to, the next step is to install the Summoner's War exporter. Now, if you already have the exporter installed, I still recommend you do an update um, if you don't have the, the current version. So to do that, and again, I'll put a link in the description, but uh, I just literally search on Google for Summoner's War Exporter. We make sure that we're going to GitHub, which is where Xandro releases it. Uh, we click on the releases. We can see the current version is 0.037. We come down here to the Summoner's War Exporter Setup WinEXE. Uh, this is the one that I use. So you're gonna download this file and then just install the file. Now, one important note, guys, um, I can't speak on behalf of Xandro. I can't assure you of anything. When you install this file, Windows is going to give you a couple of warnings saying the file's not safe. Uh, me personally, I've spoken with Xandro on Discord, not personally, but uh, I've spoken with Xandro many times. I think he's an amazing guy. I think he's an amazing supporter of our community. Uh, I can't imagine playing Summoner's War without the Optimizer. I know tens of thousands of people at least use the Optimizer. I personally feel comfortable installing the file, so I just tell Windows to keep going anyway. Go ahead and install the file. That is up to you guys. Of course, you will get those warnings, but for me personally, I just click the, um, the keep anyway on the download, and then I, I click go ahead and install. Now, the next step is to make sure that your swap is completely updated. Uh, so that's going to be in the Microsoft Store. If you're not sure how to access the Microsoft Store, you can just actually hit the Windows key, which is on your keyboard in between the Control and the Alt keys. Uh, we come up to these three dots right up here. We go ahead and we click Downloads and Updates, and then you just click Get Updates. Uh, now, just so you guys know, uh, sometimes it can take the Microsoft Store up to a week to update your applications that were downloaded through the store, so you do kind of want to force an update if you know something is out of date. Uh, the most recent change at the time of the recording of this video to the optimizer changed it so that all of the uh, server activity goes through a different server. So if you're in even a 0.0.1 older version, it's not going to run the builds. It's going to crash when you try and run them. So you do want to make sure that this is updated. All right, so now that we've got everything installed and updated, the next step is to get a certificate. So we're just gonna come up here and we're literally just gonna click this button, Get Cert. You click on Get Cert and it's gonna say Certificate Copied To and it gives you a file path. So I am gonna highlight the file path, but I am not gonna uh, highlight the name of the file. So the ca.pem is actually the name of your certificate. All I want is the file path. Now, uh, for whatever reason, in the exporter, you cannot right click and hit copy. Uh, so you're just gonna hit Control C on your keyboard. So you hold down the Control button, you hit C. Uh, I, I sometimes hit it a couple of times just to make sure if it didn't read the first time. I, I don't know why Windows does that, but it happens. So we've now copied the file path. The next thing I'm gonna do is go into my file explorer. And unfortunately, I have to cut off a little bit of the file explorer because I've got some uh, personal information in some of the directory folders. But if you see, I'm going to click up here in the address bar. So it's going to go ahead and highlight it. I'm just going to hit Control V, um, V as in Victor, and that's going to basically paste over the file path that I just had. We're going to hit Enter, and it's going to bring us to this folder where our certificate is. Now we're gonna bring our Nox up and we're gonna turn on root. So to do that, we go to this little settings cog in the bar up at the top. We do this, we hit root, we hit save settings, and it's gonna force us to restart Nox. Uh, so we'll wait for Nox to restart. And then once our Nox has restarted, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna drag this ca.pem file right here onto the Nox desktop. It's gonna bring up this window that says, uh, welcome to the file manager. So you're gonna go ahead and click okay. We are gonna come back over to the home screen. We're gonna go to tools. We're gonna go to settings. We are going to go down here to security. And then we're gonna program in a screen lock. So we're gonna have to create a pin right here. And for my purposes, I'm just gonna make this pin 99999. Uh, we'll go ahead and hit continue. Uh, we'll confirm the pin. So we're gonna go with four nines. Don't care about the notifications because we're gonna turn that back off anyway. Now we come back right here. We go to uh, install from SD card, which is uh, you scroll down, it's right here. Install certificates from SD card. 
and then we're going to go to internal storage. We come down here to pictures. We go ahead and click on CAPEM one time, just a single click. It's going to ask you for your certificate name and you're actually going to type in uh, CA.PEM again. So the exact same name that we just had. We're going to go ahead and click OK and it will now tell you that the CA.PEM is installed. Now the next thing we have to do is move this certificate into another folder. So for that, we're going to come back out to the home screen. We're going to go into our file manager, and then we're going to click the little slash right here on the left, which will bring us back to our root folder. From the root folder, we're going to go to uh, data miscellaneous. Uh, we're going to give, of course, give it root access. Uh, we're going to go to data. Then we're going to come down here to miscellaneous. Uh, then we are going to go to um, key store. So you want to make sure it's key store and not key chain and then user zero and then we will find our certificate right here. You're gonna click in the little box on the left of the certificate, then you're gonna come back up to the root slash again, so we're back to our home folder. From here, we want to look for system, etc., security, and CA certs. So we come down here to system, etc., uh, security, and then CA certs, and then we are gonna just click the little three dots right up here and we're gonna put um, move selection here. Okay, so the final step is we come back here to the home screen, we go back into tools and settings, but this time we are gonna go to our Wi-Fi settings. You're gonna see wired SSID right here. You're gonna long press on this until you get the option to modify network. You're gonna click modify network and then you're gonna click advanced options. From here, we're gonna change our proxy to a manual. And if you look right here at the top on the Summoner's War exporter, you can see your computer IP address on the left and the port on the right. Uh, so the port will always be 8080 by default, but the IP address is gonna change based on your computer and network. So we're gonna copy these numbers in here into the proxy host name, uh, type in your port, which was actually there by default. We go ahead and hit save, and now everything is uh, set up. As long as we did everything correctly, we should be good to go. So we're gonna come back here to the home screen one last time. We are going to turn off root. Before we turn off root, or I should say before we restart Knox, we're also gonna close the Summoner's War exporter. So we are gonna save settings. It's gonna say, uh, you need a restart. Do you wanna do it now or later? I just click later and I go ahead and close out Knox. Uh, so this way, everything's been shut down. I'm gonna reopen Summoner's War Exporter now, and then I'm gonna come back in here into my multi-drive. I'm gonna open my Android 5, and then we're gonna let everything boot up, and fingers crossed we did this right. Oh, while we're waiting for it to boot up, one last thing, you're gonna come over here to the Settings tab and make sure that this HTTPS mode is checked. This must be checked in order to get your JSON. Uh, at this point, we can also turn off our pin again if, uh, if you find it annoying like I do. So we're gonna come uh, back into tools, settings, uh, and security. We come in here, we go to screen lock, re-enter our pin, and then we just click on none, where we click okay, and then we're good with no more pin. And now if we've done everything correctly, fingers crossed, uh, we should be able to get our JSON. So we're gonna go ahead and click on Summoner's War. We'll come over here, click on logs, uh, so that we can know if it's gonna work and we see it is trying to connect. We're downloading information, so that means it connected to the proxy, that's good. The log screen just refreshed. We see our data is good to go. So we've got the um, save profile data, so we got our JSON, <laughs> hallelujah. All right, guys, so that's it. That, uh, and I, I was gonna say that's it. It's certainly not simple. It's a complex process, but if you followed along step by step, hopefully you were able to configure things so that you can get your JSON. Now, keep in mind, like I said before, if you don't want to play on an emulator, literally from where we're at right now, I've already got my JSON file. I don't even have to complete the login. I can go ahead and just Close. I can close all my windows, come back to the home screen. I don't even have to finish logging into the game and then I can log back in from my tablet and have an updated JSON. Uh, you can log back in anytime you want to get your updated JSON. So you just log in uh, through the emulator. But so that's it guys. As always, I appreciate you watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I really hope it was helpful and we'll see you next time. Hey guys, if you're still with me to this point, then that means that you probably liked the video, found it entertaining, or even better, both. So please smash the like button, hit the subscribe button, and leave a comment down below because those things help the channel grow, and more importantly, they show me that the video is useful, and that's the whole reason I do this in the first place.